Hey, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM. And today I am joined by David Allen, who is the author of Getting Things Done, The Art of Stress-Free Productivity. And he's joining me from Amsterdam in Holland, the Netherlands, whichever you like to call it. How you doing, yeah. David? Oh, glad to be here, John. Thanks for the invitation. Yeah. So, David, um, your book, as we were just discussing earlier, your book has sold, um, you know, over two million copies and has been translated into, I think you said, 38 languages or something. Um, so obviously it, it hit a nerve when you released this book about, you know, getting things done and the art of stress free productivity. OK, so productivity, rarely do people associate productivity with stress free. Right. So t tell me a little bit about what you mean by stress-free productivity. Well, if you see Olympic athletes before they go into the final game, what do you see them doing? Stretching and relaxing, mm -hmm. right? So the most relaxed state where you're totally present and relaxed, not distracted, is the most productive state to hit a golf ball from, to do an Olympic event from, to have a difficult conversation from, or to have a conversation with a sales client you know, <clears throat> from. Right, mm -hmm. where there's nothing else on your mind and you're totally present. So you can be present with them to find out who they are, what rings their bell, and, and engage with them appropriately. So it's about appropriate engagement, really. So what do I need to do to, to get my head clear? And the problem these days is that most people are trying to use their head as their office, and your head's a crappy office. Mm -hmm. So you know, you're trying to keep track of – if you try to keep track of more than four things, you're screwed. You can be driven by latest and loudest as opposed to strategy. So there's a real note for your salespeople. I'm sorry, you got more than four things in your head. You will be driven by latest and lettuce, not by who you ought to call right now or what you ought to do to spend time to think about, you know, your strategies. Yeah, and I and I find that I love that point now because one of the things that I find nowadays is like people love to tell us, and I may we all do love to say how we are far busier than we ever were before, right? And and I always say, are we really or are we far more distracted than we ever were before? Because, you know, now we have a thousand things popping up on our screens and our phones and everything. We can we can distract ourselves at the, you know, every nanosecond if we want. Yeah, it's it, the John is the stress of opportunity. Mm -hmm. You know, you're going to relax if you get into a crisis. If your house or your apartment, come, you know, goes into flame. Trust me, you're going to relax. Because there's only one thing you can do called live, survive. Mm -hmm. What's the next step? Where do I go? What's my outcome? Called get out of this place. What do you need to do? And tires on your car and your taxes for the year and the person you need to hire, all that, all those get put on the back burner. So most people actually move into their zone in a crisis. I just discovered how you get into your zone without having to wait for a crisis to get you there. So, so let's talk about that then. How do you, how do you get into into your zone without needing a crisis to get you there? You take everything that has your attention, little or big, and you get it out of your head. You write it down. You stick it into some place that you know you'll see sooner than later. And then sooner than later, you decide, what's the next action on cat food? What's the next action on hire a VP? What's the next action on get a life? What's the next action on should I get divorced or not? And you need to make those kind of clarification decisions. So there's five stages to how you get anything under control. First of all, you identify the stuff that's not in control. Mm -hmm. You know, That's the capture step. Then you clarify, okay, what do I need to do about mom's birthday? What do I need to do about hiring the VP? What do I need to do about a potential divorce? You need to make those decisions, which most people avoid like the plague. And then you say, okay, what's the very – and once I decide that, I need to call my sister about mom's birthday. I need to you know, about my divorce. I need to talk to my life partner about, you know, mm -hmm. what does he or she think about what we ought to do about this right now? And are you okay about it? So that's a conversation. I need. So anyway, clarifying the next action and the outcomes desired. Step two, step three, organize the results. If you can't finish the thing the moment you think about it, park a reminder of who you need to call, what you need to talk to people about. Step four, step back and reflect and review the whole inventory of the 16 errands you need to run, the six things you need to talk to your life partner about. The, the 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 43 things you need to do at your computer, whatever. And you better take a look at all that inventory before you can feel comfortable about what you then decide step five. You need to review it, step four, and then step five is engage. What do I decide to do out of all that crap? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> all, that, all that stuff that's out of my head, now I look at it. But most people are pretty smart 
And all you have to do is take a look at all your errands and you'll make a decision about which one to do. Mm -hmm. All you have to do is take a look at all the stuff that you ought to be writing on your computer or drafting or, or, or doing whatever. And some part of you is going to be you know, a good bit smarter. But the problem is if you're trying to use your head as your office, which is a crappy office, mm -hmm. you know, and you got all that stuff banging around in there, you're not going to make good decisions about it. Yeah, yeah, no, it's a highly, it's a highly cluttered and very disorganized office for most people. Indeed. Uh, um, so it, it's interesting. So um, part of part of what you were really saying is, I mean, I think at the very, if I go back to one of the first things you said, because uh, I always think this is a really important and critical piece, is the things that are outside of your control, right? We focus a lot and fixate a lot on things that we have absolutely no control over, as opposed to. Right. You know, right. narrowing it down to things that we do have control. Why, why do you think people do that? I don't know. A lot of people get addicted to worry and stress. Mm -hmm. And so they'll find something to stress about, whether it's the weather or your boss or your mm -hmm. teenager or <laughs> whatever. <laughs> but then you have to decide, see, my mission in life is to create a planet where there are no problems, only projects. Mm-hmm. Right. You give me anything that's a problem. I say, why do you consider it a problem? It's because you think it needs to be different than it is. You're just not engaged in making it so. Right. It's, it's quite simply. So what what are the things that you've got on your mind? What are the things that you need to manage and get appropriately engaged with? It doesn't mean you're going to change the, the planet. It doesn't mean you're going to mm -hmm. fix all the things you want. It just needs to be it, you need to get appropriately engaged with it so you feel comfortable about what am I going to do? What am I doing about my neighbor that's complaining about the tree that I just planted? <laughs> you know, that's going to block their view, right? There's a project that you mm -hmm. call that a problem. I say, okay, what's your project? Get resolution with neighbor. Mm -hmm. That needs to go on a project list. What's your next step? Talk to your attorney, talk to your landscaper, talk to their landscaper, <laughs> talk to <laughs> them. What's the next step? And most people avoid all that. That's why that's what's creating so much stress out there. They have so many things they could be thinking about, would like to be doing, you know, coming up if you're a parent and you, your kid's mm -hmm. two years old, but you want to get them into Harvard. How many of your of your neighbors have already figured out the, 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 the workshops their five-year-old is going to that you're missing <laughs> out on? Oh, my God. You know, I would bless you, but come on. And so the stress of opportunity is what's creating a whole lot of what the stress is going on out there. See, the world is fine. Look outside your mm -hmm. door right now, John. Yeah. The world is not overwhelmed. It's not confused. It's only you that <laughs> might be based upon your relationship to it. Yeah. So I just figured out the algorithm or the formulas about what do you need to decide, think about, park as an ex in an external system for yourself that allows you to stay clearer about all the stuff you're engaged in. And one of the things that I saw interesting on your on your bio uh, is so you you're a black belt in karate, right? You, I was, yeah, you know, was. in my twenties. I've right. trained for a long time. So. Right, right. I'm a, but I'm I, a. I can still kill. I can still kill you in a second. Yeah, if I wanted yeah. to. But you're a martial artist. Yeah, I'm a martial artist too. So, um, so we we could have an interesting um sparring mm. session. But just going back to what you were saying there, I mean, the essence of martial arts is that you really do have to calm yourself, focus and get yourself into a calm state. And when you're in a calm and a focused state, you can achieve lots and lots of great things. But uh, but like you like you say in in what you were saying about your book, but you can't focus on ten things at once, right? Or else you could just get knocked out. Right. <laughs> you can't multitask. You can mm -hmm. you can you can switch task fast. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, come on, John. If you get attacked by four people, you're yeah. not going to fight four people at once. You're one at a time. But Correct. quick refocus, right? Mm -hmm. like and that, I, one, that one, that one, that one, that one, and and so you can learn to refocus quickly. What you don't want to do is try to manage things that you can't complete the loops while you're dealing with them. So then you've got all these open loops that keep pulling on your psyche that that prevent you. You know, if you're worried about three people that might jump you from the next alley, mm -hmm. th that guy's going to hit you in the face because you you just got distracted. Right. right. You weren't present. Right. So that that's the that's essentially that's why I call this a martial art. The sort of mm -hmm. the art of life of managing the flow of life's work. Is, is how do I keep track of all the things that have, I've allowed into my ecosystem that are taking my attention and how do I free up my attention from them? Not to, not to ignore them, mm -hmm. but to make sure I'm appropriately engaged with them. In other words, if, if, I don't know, do you have any pets? Yeah, yeah, I have a dog and a cat. Right, so if cat food pops into your mind more than once, you are inappropriately engaged with your cat. <laughs> right, 
if you, oh God, we need cat food. If you go to the fridge and put it on a post-it on the fridge that whoever goes to the store that can buy mm-hmm. cat food will get it next, it's off your mind. Mm-hmm. But meanwhile, if you haven't done that, I need cat food will pop in your mind at 3 o'clock in the morning in the bed when you can't do crap about <laughs> cat food. <laughs> And so, again, unless you've externalized all of these things so that you can evaluate them, you know, objectify them, clarify them, have them as an inventory for your, in, you know, for how you evaluate things on a regular basis, you can't take a power nap. You're going to take an avoidance nap. You, yeah. can't, have a, you can't have a power beer. You're going to take an avoidance beer. Yeah. They look like the same beer. They're very different. One is, hey, look at all that stuff. I'm going to have a beer instead because <laughs> that, that beer is better than a whole lot of other things, right? And I enjoy it. It's great. It's fabulous. But so, so I mean, and, 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 and part of this is right is I think um, sometimes our people get caught up in this idea of like, so my desk is piled with and I've got all this stuff going on and I'm so busy, blah, blah. And it's almost, it's almost an avoidance of what you're talking about here. And it's really a prioritizing, right? And really looking at what needs to get done and, and looking at what, what are the important things that you need to, to, to do and get those out there. You know, John, I'm going to be, I'm going to be a, a bit of an asshole about this and say yes. most people focus too much on priorities. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of people should not set goals. They need to clean their toilet. Yeah. You know, if, if, if your day-to-day is out of control, don't try to think about bigger stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, all it's going to do is frustrate you and, and, and create more guilt, which you don't need. It's going to undermine your productivity. So you just need to be in control of whatever's got your attention, little, big, personal, professional. Mm-hmm. If I ask you, hey, John, what's most on your mind? You say, where I want to be 10 years from now. I say, fabulous. What's your desired outcome? Where do you want to be 10 years from now? And I'll have you just define that as best you can. I say, great. What's the next step? If you had nothing else to do right now but to move on that to get closure on it, get progress on it, move the needle, would you go to a computer right now? Would you go to your life partner right now? Would you go to the hardware store right now? What's next? Mm -hmm. So outcome and action become the zeros and ones of productivity. Right. Like what am I trying to produce with this client? What would would be the – you know, if you're in a sales context, what do I want to have true an hour from now? Mm-hmm. After this con- after this conversation, great. So, what's the next step? What do I need to do about that? So, this is a whether you're a nine year old or the CEO of a global corporation. I've coached both. It's the same questions. Hey, what would you like to experience for the party today? Well, great. What do we need to do? Mm-hmm. Hi, you know, what do you want to have true you know, in terms of your your the company you're trying to run right now? You know, what where what's the big picture when you grow up? What do you want to be? Great. What's the next step? Who's got it? So mm. these are the same questions. It's the, it's basically the the thought process or the cognitive process, the thinking and decision making process, that allows you to clarify all the stuff you allowed come into your ecosystem. Mm-hmm. And so basically, what you're saying is like, um, you know, obviously you have the thing you want to achieve, and then you need to actually take action and look at the next best step towards achieving that well you don't have to take that action but you need to define what it is Mm -hmm. you don't want to avoid it because you don't know what it is right you just don't do it because there are other and more important things right now but it's still on your list Mm -hmm. uh, to do when i have time to do it or uh, and and to keep evaluating that against all the other things Mm -hmm. that you might need or want to be doing but that you don't end that process that's Mm -hmm. not something that you put to bed and never have to keep doing no you're doing that forever Mm-hmm. Every time you decide to do something, you just decided to do a, to, to not do a lot of other things. And I and I think and that's that I think is something that I I, I hope everybody uh, takes note of because um, that's one of the things that I I talk to people a lot about is when you make choices, and this is why I believe a lot of people don't like making choices because when you choose something, you by default unchoose other things, right? And we sure. don't, and we like to have all well, of our actually, options. If- if you yeah. don't make decisions, you just chose not to make decisions about any of that. Right, right. So you're 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 constantly in. It's not a matter of whether you're making decisions or not. It's like, which decisions are you making? Mm-hmm. If I'm avoiding deciding what to do about a potential divorce or about hiring somebody mm-hmm. or about what to do with this client, that's still a decision. You you, you can't stop decision making. You're mm-hmm. just making that. Is that the right decision or is that the best decision? Mm-hmm. Is that the decision that will get this off your mind? Are you, are so, you again, outsourcing to fate? Yeah. Actually, what you need to do is, is add source. You, you need to source your intuition mm-hmm. that says, okay, given all that stuff that I have to do, what is my still 
small little inner voice telling me is the thing that will give me the most value. Take a nap, have a beer, call that client, sit down and draft this proposal. You know, so I, I that's why I say I, I t- tend to push up against people who have a simplistic answer to how do you set priorities because it's so subtle, it's mm-hmm. so subtle. As soon as you decide to take a nap, you decided that was more important than anything else in your life. Yeah. But you can only feel good about what you're not doing when you know what you're not doing, John. So that's the problem most people have is they have no clue of how many things they've committed to that they're not aware of now, but they feel or pulling on them. Mm -hmm. So that's a lot of what my methodology does is get them to become more conscious about I need cat food, I need life, I need a new vice president, I need, you know, I need tires on my car, I need to handle my next vacation that's on my radar. And do you find? Do you feel um, as we come up against the end here? Um, do you feel that this is becoming more of an issue? I mean, do you feel people are becoming maybe more, uh, you know, avoiding more? Um, sure. Because well, be- the more <laughs> the more opportunities you have, the more you're going to avoid. Right. Right. And because we live and, in and we live the, in a world just, that's bombarding us, we we've got a bigger with opportunities. Excuse. How many things could how many things could you and I right now if we stop doing this? How many things could you and I surf on the web right now that might add value to what's coming up on your calendar tonight or tomorrow or this afternoon or whatever? Sure. Oh come on, yeah, no, that's just infinite. Mm-hmm. Now that's infinite. I mean, I had an Encyclopedia Britannica that I could look up stuff, and I had the bulletin board on my laundromat I could look up for cool things, hmm. and I had a telephone that I could talk to my girlfriend when I was fourteen for two hours. <laughs> You know, so distraction is, you know, is kind of a universal potential opportunity. It's just Mm. now your girlfriend's available (laughs) 24-7 and and, and he or she is checking, is checking in with you and they're checking in there. You know, it's like, this is not a one, this is not a one time, two hour phone call. This is a 24-7 accessible to all those dings Mm -hmm. that may show up. And that's highly addictive. So there's a, there's a real problem with, with all of that that opportunity and do you think it's it's highly addictive and how much do you think then that but but it's also giving a a lot of people a get out of jail card for themselves right because they just go oh i I, you know i can't get anything done well come on you know that's just bs you know Mm -hmm. know, just people are just unconscious i'm sorry (laughs) i can't can't say much about that other than now you know to that point you know not to be too facile on this Mm -hmm. but to that point a lot of these opportunities are, are just creating the greater challenges for people to decide what they're doing and what's mm-hmm. important and yeah. what's strategic, what really matters. Uh, See, uh, I, I'm in social media. I've got more than a million followers mm-hmm. on Twitter. I, 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 you know, and I, I hang out on Instagram a little bit and Facebook or whatever, but that's just a cocktail party to me. So I don't have to go to cocktail parties. I've just got one on my computer. <laughs> right. So right. I just want, wander in and out, chat when I want, add things when I want, look at things, whatever. I think that's really cool. What mm-hmm. a great world we live in that we have those opportunities. That's global because I have a global network of people that I you know, play with and interact with and, mm-hmm. and engage with. Uh, but I don't have any commitment to do anything other than wander in or wander out. Mm-hmm. So, And if you really know what you're doing, you know how much time you ought to give that and how much importance you ought to give that. And whether that's just an engagement, a fun thing to let your brain rest and have mm. some fun and socialize, what's wrong with those things? Those are great as long yeah. as they're done in, in appropriate proportion so that you're balanced about what you're doing and not using those as a way to avoid the article you need to write or the person, the con- the difficult conversation you need to trigger, you know, or whatever. Mm-hmm. Well, listen, uh, David, th- this is uh, this has been great. Actually, I could talk for a long more, lot longer um, as uh I think there's a, this is a great message, and I think obviously it's a message that is – I think it's more important than ever right now because I do believe um, a lot of people are hiding behind chaos um, and not not taking taking action in their lives. Um, I, I get to see examples of it every day, so I think it's uh, the book Getting Things Done, The Art of Stress-Free Productivity. So thanks, David, for sharing some of those insights with us today. Uh, thanks, John, for the invitation. Happy to do that. Happy to share all this information with whoever is interested. Happy to come back whenever you might want me. Yeah, absolutely. And just before we go, how can people find out more about you? Gettingthingsdone.com is our website. 
and you'll see a lot of our global partners. We have a partner in the Ireland and the UK that's doing public seminars there, as well as in 60 countries. So if you just go to our website, you'll see where you might want to take a public seminar or get coaching, individual coaching about this methodology that I have. And of course, get my book, the yep. new edition, Getting Things Done. You know, it's the Bible, you know, of all this. Absolutely. And it'll also be available in the Sales Pop uh, library for purchase. So again, thanks, David. Uh, John Golden, Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine, Pipeline of CRM. Uh, see you again for another Expert Insight interview very soon. <laughs>